There is an ancient book that remains a mystery to most of the Earth's inhabitants. It tells us why we are here, reveals the mysteries of heaven and the horrors of hell, and the hero is God himself in our Lord Jesus Christ. Learn of the Ancient of Days by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of KJV BibleBelievers.com. This is the conclusion of our two part study titled Jesus Loves the Little Children. Our text is found in Mark chapter 9, verses 36 through 42. This is part two. So then, verses 39 and 40, read that with me. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Now I want to make this clear. I'm not a Pentecostal. But there are Pentecostals out there that you will never hear me say a bad thing about. I'm not a Southern Baptist. But I think there are some good Southern Baptist preachers out there. I'm not Church of the Nazarene. And I'll say they're far and few between, but there are some good Nazarene preachers out there. I've met a few of them. Now, there are some that you hear me expose. I would not expose Benny Hinn if he didn't teach people that they could be little gods and if he wasn't a crook. <laughs> I wouldn't expose Billy Graham and Joel Osteen if they hadn't gone on international television to deny that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. I wouldn't preach about the Pope. <laughs> Glenn has said Asked me about that a minute ago. Um, I thought the Pope is the Antichrist. Two-part message on the internet. I wouldn't do that if he didn't preach a false gospel of sacramental works and call himself the vicar of Christ, which means Antichrist, and allow people to call him a term that is only used once in the Bible in John 17, I believe it is, about God the Father, Holy Father. Only time ever used in Scripture. Used once, and it was about the Holy Father in Heaven. And He allows people to call Him that. I wouldn't preach against Him if they didn't do that. But see, they're against Jesus when they do these things. So that makes them against me, which is why we teach on it. Now look at this very interesting passage that liberals love to abuse, by the way. Read verse 41 with me. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name... Because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Now, this is not talking about salvation. And that's how the liberals, apostates, non-Bible believers will preach it in their pulpits. As though that's talking about being saved because you give people water to drink. Do you understand that God rewards you, whether you're saved or not, based on your works? You remember when Cornelius got saved, God was already blessing him even though he wasn't saved. But he was called a righteous Gentile. And the Jews all along, they still refer to people like, uh, we just had the anniversary, I think, uh, like 25 years of Schindler, Schindler's List. He was called a righteous Gentile because God blessed him because he blessed the Jews and blessed Israel. Now, if Schindler didn't turn to Jesus Christ, he still didn't go to heaven. But he was blessed in this life. So there are really two kinds of reward. Do you want an eternal reward? You'd better believe the gospel. But you can also receive reward whether you're saved or not. They, the Bible says, I'll bless him that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. It doesn't say they have to be saved to get either one. But the one is temporal. But if you believe on the gospel and the Jewish Messiah, that's eternal. Amen. Look at this, it says in Psalm 58, 11, So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Now you can be righteous in a practical sense even while you're not saved. And you'll be rewarded for that in this life. Still doesn't save you eternally. Um, it's a simple principle. 
You do right and God will reward you. You say, well, my life's awful terrible and I try to do the best I can. Well, imagine what it would be like if you were not doing the best you can. You see? Your life may not be great, but imagine how much worse it would be if you were just wicked. And it still doesn't save you, as we said. Now, we're going to get back. Jesus, is going to, He's answering John, but He's going to get right back to the subject. And what I like most about our Lord and Savior is He doesn't mince words. That's right. <laughs> he is not a mealy-mouthed, typical politician in the pulpit. He doesn't you know, humdrum him. You know, what do they say? Uh, 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 soft and gentle and always positive. I want to tell you, if that's your Jesus, you got the wrong guy. Look at what Jesus has to say in this next verse. Verse 42, read it with me. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Now, have you ever seen that happen? <laughs> in the Teamsters, they used to throw uh, concrete. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to say that's probably what happened to Hoffa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I just want to say this. When it comes to children, he says that believe in me. You know, I've never met a child who didn't believe in Jesus except for those who were then talked out of it by parents or teachers. And it's like you, you, you're born with this belief in Jesus. But then there comes that moment where you become accountable, understanding sin, understanding right and wrong, and there you have to make a, an informed belief in the gospel to be saved. There's that transition, and it's different for every kid. So when I think Jesus says any one of these children that believe in me, I don't think that it just means if it's a kid who, who has you know, made a public profession. I think children in general are believers in God. I remember as a child, I would have told you I believed in Jesus. But then a few years after that, when I hit the teen years, I was an avowed agnostic and would preach against Christianity if you asked me what I thought. And then at the age of 19, an informed decision, and I became a Christian in the true sense of the word. So that said, uh, this is just an example of where our culture, our world is going. These figures are not typos, and I didn't leave out a decimal point. Between 1995 and 2005, FBI stats regarding child pornography, 2,026% increase in cases opened compared to the previous 10 years. 856% increase in informations and indictments. 2,325% increase in arrests, locates, and summons. And a 1,312% increase in convictions. When you turn away from Jesus Christ individually and then a culture turns away from Jesus Christ, there's one definite thing you will see and that is an exponential growth in the abuse of children. You want to know what's happening with a person and you want to know what's happening with a culture. Look how they treat their children. And I'll also say this, it's strange, but you'll see a relationship also in how they treat their animals and their elderly. Pretty much anything innocent. Pretty much anything innocent they begin to mistreat and abuse. Yes. Amen. This is why my children have only selectively gone places without me. And when we were, they were younger, they never went to the restroom alone. I'm just telling you, don't take for granted the safety of your children. I could tell you the stories of in within five or ten minutes a child being abused and the perp getting away. And it happened in restrooms. Five, our 50,000 children are abducted annually some for only an hour or two of abuse. 
while others never return home. You have to be vigilant today as a parent like never before. And it's because the further our culture, which is made up of individuals, turn away from Jesus Christ, you will see an increase in the abuse of children and the innocent. And so I tell my girls, and say the same thing to Jenny and her boys, when the grandbabies start showing up and running around, don't take it for granted they're safe anywhere. And uh, Kathy one day said, you know, because I'd let Mariah go down, I think it's close to the time you turn 18 or right after you turn 18. But um, Kathy wanted to have Mariah down, and I let her go down there. And Kathy said, you know, I, I felt privileged, you know, that you let your daughter come down there. And, and I said, well, she can tell you, I don't let her go. <laughs> I haven't let her spend the night with very many people. Um, it's a discernment thing. Um, you get to know people, you see what their lives are like, and you feel like you can trust them. But let me tell you, I also knew that my daughters knew the red flags. She didn't see any red flags when she went to the Shingler Hall. There have been times where they saw red flags. And that was the end of it for me. I didn't risk my kids. People do things they shouldn't be doing say things they shouldn't be saying, make your child feel uncomfortable, that's the time to... because that's the world we live in. Satan's attack upon children is relentless, and all child abuse is satanic. And I could go on and on with the examples, but I want to tell you this. In our next study in Mark, from this subject we're talking about, maybe now you understand why the next verse is about hell. Every here's here's what I want to remind you in closing. Every baby ever aborted, every stillborn child, every infant who died of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, every child killed by a drunk driver, every toddler who died from disease. Every little boy or girl that was abducted or killed, or and killed, all the little children who died in war and famine and pestilence and earthquake, they are all in heaven with Jesus. Amen. And anybody tells you otherwise, just walk away from it. The Bible is clear. And I'm not just saying that because it feels good. You know me. I won't teach it if the Bible doesn't teach it. I mean, we all hope this is true, but here we have 2 Samuel 12, 23, when David's baby was uh, born and then died, even conceived in adultery. He killed a man, Uriah, to have his wife, Bathsheba, and they conceived a child in the act of adultery. And even that baby, when it died, David, it says, but now he is dead, wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. David had no doubt he was going to see that baby again. Why? Because babies, when they die, they go directly to be with the Lord. Romans 5.13 tells us this, but until, uh, For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed. Look at this. Sin is not imputed where there is no law. That's why a baby or a mentally retarded or a mentally handicapped, whatever word they want to use today, uh, anyone who is not capable of understanding law, sin is not imputed. Go back and read the story of Jonah. God told Jonah he should be ashamed of himself for not being happy that Nineveh repented because there were, what was it, a hundred thousand that didn't know the right hand from their left. The number, I, I haven't read Jonah for a couple months and it's slipped my mind, brother. But uh, God said there's this huge number of little ones. They don't know their right hand from their left. Now that could also be the mentally handicapped or whoever, but children. And He spared Nineveh, which was a wicked, wicked city. 
and Jonah had a terrible attitude. 120,000. I was close, which is good in hand grenades and horseshoes. <laughs> and so let's close with one last verse from Matthew 19, two verses, which is verses 13 and 14. Read that with me. Then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Jesus loves the little children. And they're all up there with Him. Amen. If they've gone... They're with Him and we'll see Him again. Amen. That's closing prayer. Father, we thank You for this study. We thank You for Your Word. We thank You for the assurance that we get by simply believing it in context as it's intended to be understood. Father, we thank You for Jesus. And it's a strange probably thing to say, but compared to all the other fake gods, He's so much more wonderful. I can't imagine those other gods really being the true God. And the true God is so much more wonderful than the man-made false gods. The true God took upon Himself flesh so that He could die as our substitute and pay for our sins. And then after being buried, demonstrate His power and authority over death by being raised bodily by His own power from the grave. What a wonderful God to then turn around and offer the free gift of salvation by faith in that gospel. What a wonderful God. We love You, Lord. We give You all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Let's sing it. Down at the cross where my Savior died down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of Christ. Glory to His name. I am so wondrous.
most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh bless me now my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, in joy or in pain. Come quickly and abide, or life is in vain. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh bless me now my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com where you can find a wealth of mp3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.
Bible Believers Fellowship presents a verse by verse study of the book of Revelation, available free to view on streaming video or download in MP3 audio by simply visiting kjvbiblebelievers.com. Download these free expository studies of the book of Revelation and share them with others by putting them on flash drives, burning CDs or DVDs, or simply post links to our messages in email or on your own Facebook or other social media site. Just visit kjbbiblebelievers.com, look under Videos in the menu to the right of the page, and click on the Book of Revelation link where you will find hours of free Bible studies and streaming video, and eventually you will be able to access our study of the entire Book of Revelation. If you prefer MP3 audio, click on the MP3 audio page link at the very top of our webpage and use the search to pull up our Book of Revelation studies. All are provided free of charge thanks to the free will offerings and support of the Bible Believers Fellowship family and kjvbiblebelievers.com. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to read that with me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And that just means unless you've just flippantly said, oh yeah, I believe. There have been many people have a preacher come to their door, knock on the door, and say, oh, say the sinner's prayer, and oh, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. And they don't mean it. Listen, folks, you know your heart. I don't. You know your mind. I don't. And no one else does. But if you have not been serious with God and really believed the gospel, you're on your way to hell. You have purposely put a wall of separation between you and God because you've not taken this seriously. But if you will take it seriously and really search your heart and say, I believe. I believe this gospel. And what is the gospel? Read verses 3 and 4 with me. Here it is. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's it. You seriously, before God, believe that He died for your sins and paid the full price. He rose from the dead and conquered sin and death. And by that alone, you have eternal life. The Bible says you are saved. But if not, then not. That's how simple it is. You know, religion stinks. Because religion muddies the waters. Religion makes you think that church membership or having a title or something like that is going to help you in dealing with your sin. Let me tell you something. You sinned against God, not the religious people, not the institutions who are giving you all these false promises. You sinned against God and what He says matters. And if you sinned against God, He is infinite. Your sin requires an infinite payment. That's why you can't work for it. You can work your entire life and do the best you can and it's still finite. You can never do enough works to pay for the cost of sin. And Jesus dying on the cross was an infinite payment for your sin. And that's why He's your only hope. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Visit the online ministry of Bible teacher and elder of Bible Believers Fellowship in Worthington, Ohio, Michael Kaler. Visit 2 Timothy 2-15.org. That's 2 Timothy 2-15.org.